Hey everyone! Somehow I didn't, I didn't plan this, but somehow, you know, this whole month has been about investing. <laughs> Alright, so um, every topic was about investing. From why people go bankrupt to the kind of apps I use to the risk of investing in foreign land. So yeah, I thought. You know, since I've already recorded three episodes for investing, I'll do one more episode for investing this month. And today, we're going to spend some time to talk about this very interesting phenomenon called negative interest rates. It's like, yeah, negative interest rates, it's a new thing, but it's now like a thing, right? Bank of Japan has been doing negative interest rates for a really long time. Uh, ECB is exploring negative interest rates. The Swiss bank is doing negative interest rates. So, you, you know, you start to see more and more central banks having interest rates in negative territory, which is quite crazy, right? <laughs> how, do, how do interest rates become negative, huh? It's like, I lend you money, but I gotta pay you to, to lend money. It's like, my, my goodness, what's, what's going on, right? So, it's a very complicated thing when we're not going to talk about everything. Right, but I think more importantly for us, we need to be concerned about how negative interest rates will affect us as retail investors. Right, so I'm more concerned about how negative interest rates will affect us. And today we're going to talk about three points that I have for you on how negative interest rates will affect retail investors like us. So good morning, everyone. I welcome you to another day with a financial coconut. In our podcast, we'll be debunking financial myths, discovering best financial practices, discussing financial strategies that fits our unique life. You get it. Ultimately empowering us to create a life we love while managing our finances well. Today's topic is three ways negative interest rates affect retail investors like us. So we definitely need to talk about interest rates first, right? So what are interest rates? Essentially is the fees that you are charged, you know, usually as a percentage of the amount of money that you borrow. So if let's say you borrow 10,000 from the bank and the bank charges you an 8% interest fee per annum, it means that every year you got to pay 8% of $10,000 as a fee. It doesn't mean that you are repaying the capital, right? It means that if this year you only pay 8%, right? You only pay $800, it means that you have not paid any bit of the capital. You're just paying the fee, right? So you got to pay more than that to repay me you know, the fundamental capital that I lend to you at $10,000. Get idea, right? So ultimately, it is quite a logical business. You need money, I lend it to you for a period of time and you pay me a little bit extra through this period of time because of the risk, because I could have used the money to do something else, but instead I lend it to you, so you pay me a little bit extra. So I think that's very logical. But now comes the <laughs> not logical part. <laughs> the not logical part is negative interest rates, which means I'm paying you to borrow money from me. Woohoo! Sounds like fun, right? It sounds super fun. People pay you money to borrow money so that you can spend more money. Sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. And that is the idea behind negative interest rates. Ultimately, it's they want you to spend more, right? They want you to spend more so that you spur the economy. Because if you understand the basics of economics, it is a movement of money. Someone's spending is another person's income. So when in a recession, when people no longer spend, it ripples down as an effect because less people spend, that means other people will lose their income and then the spiral keeps going down. And this is what in economics term, we call it a multiplier. But I don't need to be so technical. <laughs> Ultimately, you just need to know if more people spend, the economy becomes better. If less people spend, the economy becomes worse. And in this spending, there are a few bunch of people, few clusters. Of course, for us, normal people, we are called consumers, right? And then there are the investors and there are the businesses and then there's the government. So everybody are just trying to spend money and move money around. As long as more people move money, more people spend, the economy grows. Lesser people spend, the economy shrinks. Okay, that is how, in simplified terms, how the economy works. So then, when does negative interest rates come in? 
So you realize that negative interest rates doesn't apply to us. You cannot go to the bank today and say that, hey, I borrowed 10000 from you. Why your interest rate? You know, you're not paying me to borrow money. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So it has not touched to the consumer. It has not reached us as retail investors or retail borrowers. The central banks only lend to one kind of people, which is the government. The central banks only lend to the government. So when the central banks set a negative interest rate, they are trying to get the government to borrow more, to spend more, so that they can spur the economy for whatever reason that they have, okay? The Fed will tell you that mandate is 2% inflation, unemployment rate uh, below 3%, whatever, okay? Whatever. Different central banks have different goals and that is up to them. So in normal days, interest rate is positive. That means when the government borrows from the banks, from the central banks, they have to pay a fee, an interest fee, right? But when interest rates come down to zero, that means they don't need to pay. And when it comes down to negative, it's all just trying to promote the government to borrow more money so that they can spend. Okay, that is the idea. Interest, negative interest rates probably will not ever hit us. Right, so it, it doesn't matter as much in terms of us experiencing, oh, we can borrow money and get paid. You know, that, that, uh, you can forget about that. Uh, probably will not happen. But given that, the, that this environment okay, of negative interest rates is getting very prevalent, where the government can borrow money from the central bank at such a, a negative rate, I was about to say such a low rate, but it's so low, <laughs> it's in negative territory, but it's okay. So the government can borrow at negative rate and the government actually is one of the biggest borrowers in the market. Of course, corporate debt is also a huge thing, but most governments borrow a lot of money. But that is a story for another day, okay? But when you look at it, if the biggest borrower or one of the biggest borrowers is borrowing at negative rates, right? Everyone else will have to set borrowing rates much lower. If not, nobody will borrow, right? Mm. So... Indirectly, it affects the interest rate of everything else, right? From your bank deposit rates to your fixed deposit rates to maybe other than credit card rates. Huh? <laughs> credit card rates, like, much have never come down, huh? but it's okay. You get the idea. <laughs> Sorry for another day. You get the idea. In an environment of negative interest rates, right, all these other rates come down, which brings me to my first point. The first point is loan-based investments will have a reduced and prolonged reduced returns until this environment changes. So what are some loan-based investments? These are things like fixed deposits, right? These are things like bonds, right? Government treasuries. All these will have a lower return rate because the whole environment is having a lower interest rate. So as an investor, if you lend someone money, you're going to be getting less, right? So all these are loan-based investments, right? And they have the nature of lending money. So because the biggest lender is, you know, taking such a low rate, everyone else will get a very low rate. So you will see all the treasuries. Treasuries essentially are just government debt. Lah. That means you lend money to the government, you know, or your fixed D or your bonds, you know, they all come down on average for their returns. So you definitely see this happening, right? And I, if some of you already own some, you know, bonds or anything, you will see the returns coming down because the biggest guy is getting a cheaper rate. Everyone else will kena, right? Everybody will have a lower rate. So as an investor, if you own loan-based investments, you'll definitely have a reduced rate. And I believe that this will prolong for quite a period of time. Because if you look at it now, the economy is supposedly in a very good state, supposedly. Right? That means unemployment is really low, GDP is high, uh, a lot of people are spending money. But I believe a lot of people are spending on credit because the credit card numbers are going up like crazy and loans are going up like crazy. But that is a story for another day. So supposedly, the economy is already in a good state, which means a lot of people are employed, the GDP is fine. Yet, the interest rate is so low. So when, or in fact, interest rates is in negative for some places. So when shit happens, right, when the economy comes down, the strategy has always been to reduce interest rates so that people borrow more money and spend more. But because interest rates are really so low, 
how much lower can it get, right? So you will see a prolonged period because I believe that there will be a bus cycle coming. That means there will be a recession coming. Uh, it is inbuilt into, you know, um, the market economy is inbuilt to capitalism. As long as everybody flood into something and then there is a bubble, the bubble needs to burst and, you know, the, the money will normalize, the economy will normalize and heal itself. So... Because of that, I don't see any time in the next 5-10 years to see interest rates going back up to normal, you know, to what, 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 maybe not, you shouldn't call it normal anymore, <laughs> this is the new normal, to something that we are more familiar with, which is positive interest rates in the mid 5 to 7% kind of interest rates. You will not see that in any time soon. So if you are looking at loan-based investments, bonds, treasuries, or if you own loan-based investments, you're going to be expecting really low yield for the next yeah, 5 10 years in my view, okay? Some people will say different, but in my view that is that is how I see it. All right? It brings me to my second point. Because loan-based investments are going to get really really low yields, you will start to see equity prices going higher. Equity prices going higher because there are a lot of money managers in the market that definitely need to invest. It's like retail retail investors like us. We can invest, we can don't invest, you know. We can we can chill, we can not do anything, you know, if we want to. But there are a lot of money managers holding huge sum of money, pension funds, hedge funds, family offices, right? All these people are hired to manage money and find por- find profits in the market. So they definitely need to find profits in the market and they're not going to find any profits from loan-based investments. right? So if they're not going to be finding profits from loan-based investments, they're going to be looking into equities. They're going to take on more risk to enter the equity market so that they can make returns to pay for pension, so that they can returns to pay for the, the state funds. They can get returns for the family offices that they work for. So definitely you will see equity prices going higher. But at the same time, when all these people flood into the mar- the equity market, then there is a tendency of a bubble forming because suddenly a lot of money comes in. right? So you, you, you see a lot of the global stock exchange going to new highs. So there are many reasons why they are going to new highs. And I believe one of the main reasons is because loans loan-based investments are so bad their returns are so bad that a lot of these money managers have no choice but to shift into equity all right so equity prices will will continue to go higher if the loan based investments come down but definitely it will be more choppy and more volatile because more money is moving in and out right you get the you get the idea okay so if you are not in equities, I highly question why. Because history has proven time and time again, equities make, make the money in the long term. Because behind every share, behind every equity, okay, they all mean quite the same thing. Uh, stock, share, equity, they all mean the same thing. Different people say it differently and sometimes you get a bit messed up. Okay, just see them as all the same. Behind every stock, every share, every equity, there is an underlying business. Right, so if you buy a Disney share, you get a part of Disney. Right, so when you go to Disneyland, you're very happy because you see all these people spend like woohoo, you know, you're a shareholder. And then <laughs> that was why I was very happy when I go to the Apple store. I see so many people queue because I'm a shareholder of Apple. Right, I'm very happy when I go in Starbucks and I see so many people queue at Starbucks. Oh, very good, very good because I own a small little part of Starbucks by owning their shares. So if you're not in equities, you're not in shares, I don't know why. You need to have a little bit of this of your portfolio in equities and in the stock market because that is where all the businesses are, are growing because there is an underlying business behind all these things. That means there's an underlying concept of growth, right? And you want to invest in something that grows, And of course, now in an environment where bonds are getting really bad returns because of these negative interest rates, you have nowhere else to go. You have to look at equities. Even the CIO of DBS said that equities is the only game in town, right? You can Google CIO DBS. I cannot remember his name offhand, but he said that equities is the only game in town. And even Ray Dalio, he has at least 25% in equities. Buffett has almost everything in equities other than his cash position. All the biggest boys buy equities because businesses is what drive the economy underlying, right? So as long as there's the underlying growth, 
then you will see equity prices move. And because of the negative interest rate environment, you will see stock prices going higher, right? Higher than before, people will be paying a bit more for stocks than before. Right, that is my belief. Right, so if you're not in equity, uh, I don't know why you're not in. Uh, you should be in, especially if you're young. You should have some part of your investment in stocks. They are not as risky as what you think they are. Right, if you have not watched the episode of uh, Three Ways where people get bankrupt in the stock market, go and watch it. Right, because over there I talk about why people actually get bankrupt and because they don't understand how to actually maneuver the stock market and how to actually invest in equities. Right, so you definitely must have equities and yeah, this will push equity prices higher. And my third point to sum up the day is that because of negative interest rates, you will see inflation tendency go higher. Why do I say so? You see, all central banks have uh, two main strategy. Okay, one is interest rates. The other is money supply. Okay, follow me. Uh. These things are a bit more complicated. If you have no economics background, you know, you, you may struggle a little, but let me share with you a little bit. So, like we agreed before, the economy is made up of spending. Someone's, someone's expense is another person's income. So everybody must spend. Whether it's the government, the business, investors, or you know, consumers like us. So as long as people spend, the economy grows. right? So when there's a bad time in the market, interest rates come down so that it can promote spending. Easy to understand? Okay, this is easy to understand, right? But when you look at the current market, most people's you know, interest, central banks' interest rates, you know, are like, the Fed is at 1.5, ECB is like, what, 0 0.7 or something. The BOJ, Bank of Japan, which is Central Bank of Japan, is a negative territory, right? The Swiss Bank is also a negative. MAS is at about 2.5%, thereabout. Okay, by the time this video is out, I don't know, their rates change, huh? but it's about 2, 2 plus percent. So you see everyone in a super low interest rate environment. When they are in such a low interest rate environment, they have no tools to reduce interest rates, right? You reduce 2%, you expect a lot of people to spend? I don't think so, right? 5% deduction, you will see spending, spending, you know, going up. But it's only 2% or 1 point something percent or even no percent to bring interest rates down. The central banks will have to resort to another strategy, which is to increase the money supply, which means commonly known as print money. But these days, most of them don't print money. Huh? <laughs> they don't really like suddenly on the printer, ch -ch 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 -ch, start printing a lot of money. <laughs> but that is what a lot of people uh, you know, uh, commonly know it as printing money. So when the, when, the, when the central banks print more money, okay, I will not go into the details as to how they do this, but let's just take it as when the central banks print more money, there will be more money in the market chasing after the same amount of goods. Right? You're not seeing a lot more production, you're just seeing more money flowing around. So inflation will go up. Tendency for inflation to go up is very, very high. Right? And, and this affects us and we need to be aware about it as retail investors. Right? Because when inflation goes up, inflation goes to 2%, goes to 2.5%, goes to 3%, 5 5%. got to be very aware of how we're going to manage our money because further, further makes loan-based investments not viable if you're only making fixed deposit of like 1 point something percent or a bond fund of like 2%, 3%, Interest rate goes up, you're going to hit your investment strategy, right? So be aware that in a negative interest environment, if something happens, or even if nothing happens, you see the banks all printing more money already. So you're going to see an inflation rate going up. And that is going to affect us as retail investors. It's going to affect our strategy. All right? So I'm going to sum up today with the three ways negative interest rates affect us. Number one is loan-based investments will have reduced returns. Number two is that it will push equity prices higher. And number three, you will see higher inflation rate or higher tendency for inflation rate to go up. And I hope you learned something useful today. See ya. Hey, I hope you learned something useful today and truly appreciate that you took time off to better your life with the financial coconut. Knowledge is that much more powerful and interesting when shared, debated and discussed. I hope you will share what you've gained with people you love and I want to hear from you. Give me some questions and help me along with building a community of financially savvy coconuts. 
I hope together we can fulfill our curious minds and our desire for clarity. Email me at financialcoconut at gmail.com. Message me on Facebook or join our community telegram group, The Financial Coconut. I will do my best to address your questions in the future podcast series, especially if many people are concerned about the same topic. With that, have a great day ahead. Stay tuned next week. Always remember, personal finance can be chill, clear, and sustainable for all.